From the WYLN studios in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, WYLN Late Edition News at 10 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Gary Perna. New at 10 tonight, the Luzerne County Shine Program received a federal grant that totals nearly $400,000 for each of the next three years. Congressman Lou Barletta, State Senator Johnny Dechank, and Wilkes University President Patrick Leary made the announcement today. The federal funding will come through the Pennsylvania Department of Education via the 21st Century Community Learning Center's grant program. Shine of Luzerne County began last fall in the Wilkesbury area, Greater Nanticoke area, and Wyoming Valley West school districts and will expand to Luzerne County later this year. The program is for students in K through 8th with a focus on science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Barletta said that this is tremendous news for the SHINE program of Luzerne County. Senator Johnny Dechak said, From the beginning of our efforts to bring SHINE to Luzerne County, we have worked to provide the necessary resources for our children and our communities to succeed. Well, before I send it to Ann for the rest of the news, WYLN has learned that Wilkes-Barre Mayor Tony George will hold a press conference to discuss personnel issues tomorrow, which is Thursday. That press conference will be at 11 a.m. WYLN will be there. We'll have the full story for you at 5.30 on Thursday. That's what's new at 10. Here's Ann Galney with the rest of today's top stories. Good evening. It's Thursday, January 6th, 2016. I'm Ann Gownley. Fire decimated a home in Wilkes-Barre's Mayflower section last night. It broke out around 1030 on a house on Park Avenue. The fire went to a third alarm. A woman who lives there was taken to a hospital for treatment of smoke inhalation. Officials think it started in a second floor bedroom. A pet dog and cat died in that fire. Shortly after 6 a.m. Tuesday, firefighters were called to the 100 block of Prospect Street for a structure fire. When they arrived on scene, they found a small fire on the front porch of the residence. They quickly extinguished it. Now, fire officials and detectives from the Wilkes-Barre Police Department are investigating. No word on what caused that fire as of this evening. Mayor Tony George's shakeup at Wilkes-Barre City Hall has begun. He's fired Deputy City Administrator Ann Toole and City Attorney Bill Vinsco. George had said he'd planned on restructuring. Vinsco is former Mayor Tom Layton's cousin, though whether his firing had anything to do with that isn't clear. Vinsco had been fired, hired by Mayor Layton before Tom McGordy. George has not named replacements, though the Citizen's Voice says it's been told Assistant City Attorney Tim Henry would replace Vinsco. In December, an email was sent to all city employees that said George was planning on taking applications for four top city positions, City Administrator, Human Resources Director, Police Chief, and Fire Chief. You can't pay your city bills with cash in Nanticoke. As of New Year's Day, the city will only accept checks, money orders, debit cards, and credit cards. No more cash. The city says it will save about $6,000 a year in bonding costs since it won't have to cover employees handling cash anymore. Payment with credit and debit cards include a processing fee. The city is also looking into online payments for some of those fees. A Sugarloaf Township man is now behind bars after admitting to police he was driving drunk back in January of 2015 in Rush Township when he crashed his car into a new Ringgold woman's vehicle. School County Judge James Goodman sentenced 48-year-old Edward Farley to 60 to 6 months in prison and 80 days on house arrest with electronic monitoring. The woman, Gabrielle Lech of New Ringgold, suffered serious injuries as a result of the crash. Police say Farley was driving on East Main Street from Quake Ake at Route 309 when he crossed the double yellow line and proceeded to drive north in the southbound lane. This was his third DUI-related incident. Farley will also have to pay $750 in fines and $60 in restitution to Schuylkill Medical Center South Jackson Street. He will also have to perform 60 hours of community service. Attorney General Kathleen Kane's trial on perjury charges will be overseen by a new judge in Montgomery County. Judge Wendy Demchak Alloy had been assigned the case. She is a former prosecutor turned judge. The trial had previously been assigned to President Judge William Ferber Jr. 
He says increasing responsibilities made it impossible for him to oversee the case. Demchak Loy had served in criminal and juvenile courts since she ascended to the bench in 2010. Kane is facing perjury, obstruction, administration of law, abuse of office, and false swearing charges in connection with allegations she illegally released grand jury testimony to the Philadelphia Daily News in an effort to embarrass political rival prosecutor Frank Fina. Kane also is accused of lying to a grand jury in November of 2014 to cover up her alleged leaks by lying under oath when she claimed she never agreed to maintain her secrecy. Prosecutors have since discovered that Kane signed a so-called secrecy oath on her second day in office, promising secrecy for statewide investigating grand juries. A Commonwealth Court panel overturned a provision in state law that imposed a lifetime ban against working with elderly, sick, and disabled for those convicted of a range of criminal offenses. The seven-judge ruled unanimously last week that the ban imposed 20 years ago in the state's Older Adults Protective Services Act was too broad and violated workers' rights. The decision agrees with the Social Services Agency and five workers who sued. It says the blanket prohibits treatment of a variety of convictions identically and left no room for employers to consider other factors. A spokesman for the Wolf Administration says it hadn't decided whether to appeal. A Class 1 recall has been announced by the U.S. Department of Agriculture after a federal inspector found that Wegmans altered its production schedule and produced chicken products outside the approved hours of operation. The inspector said the chicken products produced on Sunday were never inspected. The Department of Agriculture said that the Class 1 recall is classified as a situation that has, quote, reasonable probability and that consuming the product will result in serious adverse health consequences from that chicken. No confirmed reports of illness to date. The chicken products being recalled are up on your screen now. The chicken was shipped and distributed to retail locations in Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Well, it's time now for a first look at our forecast. It's another cold day here in northeastern Pennsylvania, but at least the sun was out. WYLN's Gary Perna is back in the Weather Center, filling in for Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic. Gary, what is the weather looking like for the rest of our work week? Well, and you know what, it was a lot warmer today. You know, when you walked outside, you weren't getting, you know, smacked in the face with that cold air. That, that sun kind of was like warming up the atmosphere a little bit, but it didn't get too warm. We still were, stayed in pretty much the 30s. Some areas got into the, you know, very low 40, maybe 41. But what can we expect for the rest of the week? We'll have the answer for you coming up in just a couple of minutes, Ann. Thanks, Gary. Coming up next, details on an annual tradition of the Borough of Freeland. We'll hear from the former mayor about it and how benefits families in the area that are battling cancer. Plus, a million-dollar lottery ticket was sold in Schuylkill County, and the Powerball goes off tonight. Could you be the next big winner? That and much more coming up here on WYLN. Stay tuned. You're watching WYLN News with Ann Gownley, Gary Perna, Julie Stefanovich, Paula Degnan, Chief Videographer Mike Lula, Weather with Meteorologist Joe Garbacic, Sports with Eric DeBerardinis, and Gabriella Justin. Combined Insurance makes it easy to protect you and your loved ones by paying cash directly to you when you need it most. Whether you're looking for accident and sickness, disability, or life coverage, Combined Insurance has a policy to meet your needs and fit your budget. Call John Ravello, 570-499-0504 for an appointment to help determine the best coverage for you. That's John Ravello, 570-499-0504. Where will you be going to school this fall? If you're entering middle school or high school, take our entrance exam on January 30th. It's a great school where you get personal attention. Make new friends. And begin your path to success. Register today for MMI's entrance exam.
Well, welcome back, everyone. And I'm joined now by Tammy Martin, who is, of course, former Freeland mayor and event organizer for the third annual Country for Your Cure, which uh, many people may remember as the annual uh, mayor's dinner dance in Freeland. Mm -hmm. And once again, uh, this will be going on in Freeland. And this is a cool event to raise money uh, for cancer patients in the area. So, Tammy, give us a little bit of a background and, and why is this so important to you? Um, we started this 19 years ago. Uh, Tim and I started it when we lost his father to cancer. We wanted to help, you know, others who were battling it. Uh, we always donated the money, always, all of it went to the American Cancer Society. And unfortunately, Tim battled it himself and he, you know, lost his battle. But I promised him before he passed that I would continue to do it. Um, once we sat down and realized there's so many people right here in our own neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. People that you sit next to at your children's basketball games, people you work next to. You know, it, there's so many people who are affected and I just wanted to do something to help those in our own mm -hmm. area so we decided to donate the money locally. All the money, 100% of it stays local to local, you know, families mm -hmm. in our area that are battling it. Um, it, it's a great night. We have such a good time, and it, it is, you know, I mean, we do, we do make a difference. When people say one small group can't make a difference, I will go up against anybody and I will disagree with them because we do make a difference. And I know this is such a, a unique event. There, there's music, there, there's food, there's drink, um, you know, there, there's raffles. So there's something really for everybody to take part in. And of course it happens uh, January 30th at the Freeland Event Center, mm -hmm. um, you know, and lots of great entertainment. So if people are interested, how can they get a hold of you and, you know, what can they expect? Um, if anybody wanted tickets, they can either call me Myself or my daughter, my cell phone is 956-4940 and my daughter's is 956-9297. Or you can message us on Facebook. Um, I will be in the old Video Mania on Friday from four to nine. I will be selling tickets then. Mm -hmm. um, you can just get a hold of us. And you know, as you said, it's a full night. It is a 21 and over event because there is alcohol. Mm -hmm. um, we have music by Music Master Entertainment, North of 40, Ostrich Hat. We have Tricky Trays. Um, the tickets are $35, but with that ticket, you're getting a dinner catered by J. Paul B. Catering. Mm -hmm. You're getting all three entertainment, mm -hmm. beer and sodas included. Um, there's Tricky Trays, and this year we added, thanks to a very good friend of ours, Amy Chalinski, we're going to have a photo booth, cool. which I'm not sure is going to be a good thing or a bad thing, but we're going to capture some of those memories from that night. And it's just an all around good time to come out. You know, mm -hmm. cold winter months, holidays are over, there's really nothing to do. You know, come out and have a good time with your friends and help a good cause. And I know over the last uh, 18 years, including the mayor's uh, dinner dances and all that, uh, over $80,000 has been raised uh, and has helped local families. So that's a big accomplishment. And, and, and Tammy, you said you'll vow to keep doing this as long as you can. Yes. Um, along with the dinner dance, we did in October our lantern launch, mm -hmm. which that money is going to be added to this so that we can help more families. Um, as you said, we've raised over eighty about $87,000 so far and wow. donated it. Um, with next year being our 20 year anniversary, my goal is to hit $100,000 by the time we hit 20 years. Mm -hmm. But if I have to keep doing it for another 20 years until there's a cure and there's no more need for it, I'll continue to do it. All right. Well, again, everyone, all that information, of course, you've seen throughout the package. It will be up on our Facebook page here at WYLN News. And, of course, it's January 30th at the Freeland Event Center. And for more information, you contact Tammy. All that information, like I said, will be up on our Facebook page here on WYLN News. Stay with us. Weather is next. Hi, I'm Donna Palermo, Secretary of Palermo Heart to Heart. We are now recruiting businesses, nonprofits, and individuals who carry beads of courage to encourage children or teens who have cancer or who are coping with other serious chronic illnesses to participate in the program. Inside each carry a bead kit is a match bead set. Every time you carry a bead, you connect with a child. You keep and collect the other bead as a symbol of your commitment to care. If you or your business would like to participate in Beads of Courage, please visit our website listed on the screen. Do-it-yourself stores may be fine for garden hoses and 2 by 4s but appliances? Those guys may know these washers, but Grand Central knows these washers 
and ranges and refrigerators and more. GE and GE Profile appliances are designed to reflect the modern approach to style with clean lines and a streamlined look for today's kitchens. So for wood screws and wheelbarrows, Go ahead, do it yourself, but for the right appliances at the right price. Let Grand Central do it for you. WYLN is proud to announce a huge technical upgrade to our channels that will bring a better digital picture and expanded coverage area to viewers all over northeastern and central Pennsylvania. In addition to channel 35.1 in Hazleton, you can watch a crystal clear picture in Berwick and Columbia County on channel 47.1 and in East Stroudsburg on channel 24.1. And we're proud to announce Pennsylvania's newest TV station, channel 9.1 in Williamsport, serving Lycoming, Montour, Northumberland and Union Counties. Now more than ever, WYLN is your local network. Well, take a look at the past 24 hours out there across the USA and, you know, everyone's pretty much in the 50s and 40s, 30s up in our area, 25 up in Boston, New York City coming at 29, Miami, 72. I tell you, that's probably the place to be right now if you love warm weather and all those snowbirds here in Pennsylvania are heading south uh, now that all the holidays are over. In the past 24 hours, the temperatures pretty much stayed the same in the 20s. You know, Philly got into 32, Allentown as well, but we've pretty much up here in the northeastern part of the state stayed in the 20s, uh, upper th 30s for some of us throughout today. Taking a live look across the area, nothing going on. That's going to be pretty much what we're going to see tonight, tomorrow, uh, and even into Friday as well. Not too much going on out there. You're traveling tonight, maybe you're heading into work for 11 o'clock or you're heading home from work. Going to be clear, there is still some wind. We still have the flags out here whipping around, so that indicates we're going to have some gusts of wind coming through the area. Sealands Grove at 7, Mount Pocono coming in at 10, Allentown at 9, Wilkesbury at 8. So it's kind of frigid out there. And if you're traveling tomorrow, 30s tomorrow, which is not bad, will be nice and clear. So hopefully that sun will come into our atmosphere again. It will warm it up a little bit so it won't be as cold and brutal since we're not quite used to it just yet. Your seven day forecast here in WYLN, pretty much the same what I told you at 530 holds true tonight at 10. Thursday and Friday with 40, Saturday coming in at 41. Those overnight lows, look at that, 16 to 15 to 17. But Saturday into Sunday, see it only kind of drops a little bit. And then Sunday, 52, so we don't have to worry about anything really. Sunday looks like it's going to rain just a little bit off and on. The models are too far out yet to see what will exactly happen. But it's going to rain, not snow, as of now, which is good. Stay with us. We have more for you coming up in just a couple minutes. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. Watch off the beaten path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed. WYLN TV 35, first in live sports. Join Marty Burns, Joe DeMelfi, and the entire WYLN sports team as we bring you the best in live local sports. WYLN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is $500 million and people are flocking to local retailers to buy their tickets hoping to win. Our Julie Stefanovich has more on the story. 
now. The temperatures may not be rising much these days, but the jackpot for Powerball is. Folks around the nation and right here in our own backyard are feeling the fever. The jackpot is steadily climbing to over $500 million. Now there are those who play on a regular basis and others only when the winnings are big, such as tonight's Powerball. And if you're not too familiar with how the game is played, then Elizabeth Brill from Fagley's and McAdoo has the rundown. We have play slips, which we love. A uh, customer can give us the play slip and we just slide it through the machine. It prints all their tickets automatically. You can either get the $2 Powerball or you can get the multiplier, the power play, which is $3. And if you get anything less than the winning amount, you multiply your winnings, say, if you normally would have gotten $2 and it multiplies it by five, then you would have a $10 winning ticket. You can choose to fly solo and purchase your own tickets, or you can better your chances of winning by going in with coworkers, family, and friends. Uh, typically when the Powerball is this high or Mega Millions is this high, we see customers come in, they have their work pool, all of the people at their workplace put all their money together, they come in with stacks of ones, fives, tens, all sorts of denominations, plop all their money on the counter and they get as many tickets as they can possibly afford. Since Powerball is nationwide, many people think that a winner can't come out of our area. But one person recently did win. A winning million dollar ticket was sold for the New Year's Millionaire Raffle drawing that was held on Saturday at Rensselaer's Ice Cream in Ringtown. It's the winning, one of the four winning million dollar raffle tickets from here. They have not released their name to the public yet, but it is one of our customers and they are from the area. Big jackpots also mean more business for area stores. Since then, and the Powerball jackpot has been very high. So we've had customers coming in, we've had new customers coming in, people from out of the area just curious to see who sold the winning ticket, to see what our store is like, and they're buying the Powerball ticket from us. We asked customers at Rensselaer's what they would do with all that money. Help my family a lot. I'd pay all their houses off, their bills, and uh, that's about it. Maybe go on a good vacation. I come down here first, I'll let her know. And then after that? And after that, um, never did it before, so I don't have any experience about it. So uh, we'll see what happens. Though the chances of winning may be only one in 290 million, we could all still dream big. So you can ask yourself, what would you do if you're tonight's big Powerball winner? Reporting for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Thank you, Julie. Coming up next, Eric D. Berardinas is in with sports here on WYLN. Plus, Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacek will have one final look at our forecast. Stay tuned. WYLN TV 35 has strong ties to the community as evident in its commitment to important causes like the American Cancer Society and Helping Hand Society Tilt Funds. WYLN's commitment to Northeastern Pennsylvania continues with a broadcast of Hazelton's Fun Fest Parade and both Christmas and St. Patrick's Day parades in Wilkesbury. In the summer, we broadcast the Weatherly and Giants of Spare Hill Flag, and throughout the year, we provide important community services through the broadcast of town meetings, school board meetings, election night coverage, and other events. WYLN, we're your local network. Hi, I'm Bill Washko. Join me for a Let's Talk Chiropractic when our guest, Rick Ryder, professional wrestler, will be on with Dr. Stacy and Dr. John, only on WYLN TV 35. Wednesday, usually the off night for area hoops, but that wasn't the case tonight for Hazleton and Wyoming Valley West girls basketball. Lady Cougars coach Joe Gavio, always active and always animated. No different tonight. His team up 10, but Lady Spartans figure out the press temporarily. Erin Gibbons ahead of the pack for two, and then racing out herself. It's not how they teach it, but Gibbons getting the job done Hazelton up just 37-31. That fast pace continues in the Cougars' favor, though. Maddie Mrochko, runner and the roll. Then off the dribble, pull up and pure. It's Mrochko again. The lead back into the double digits and Hazelton, 68 to 52 winners. Now we take a look at our weekly high school basketball power rankings. On the girls' side, Blue Mountain, number seven. 
Holy Redeemer finally suffered back-to-back -back losses for the first time in two years. Their number six, Minersville, will be in the Schuylkill League district playoff hunt come playoff time. Hazelton, who you just saw, narrowly fell to Dallas on Monday, so the Mountaineers with the edge for now. Nanico impressive without their top player, out with injury. Number one belongs to the streaking Marion Phillies. Boys rankings, Blue Mountain off to a solid start in Division I of the Schuylkill League. Little separation between Crestwood and Nanticoke as evidenced by the Trojans' one-point margin of victory over the Comets earlier this season. Shenandoah Valley's Joel Santana nearly recorded a quadruple double last night, and the main reason for the Devils being in that number four spot. Hazelton has suffered a few early season losses, but they'll be very dangerous come playoff time. And according to one publication, Minersville number eight in the entire state in double A, but it's Pottsville staying at number one. The Tide haven't lost a regular season game in two years. Ever since the Pinstripes moved in on music, Dave Miley was a constant force in the Scranton Wilkes-Barre dugout, from the Yanks to the Rail Riders. But Miley left that post in the fall, and today the organization announced its new manager. Al Pedrique has been in the Yankees organization since 2013 and comes to the Rail Riders after managing the AA Trenton Thunder to a 71 and 71 record in 2015. Formerly, Pedrique worked in the Astros, Royals, and Diamondbacks organizations, including an interim managerial role with the D backs in 2003. Tommy Phelps, who has been in the organization for nine years, was named the Rail Riders pitching coach. The former Yankees draft pick Tommy Wilson is the team's new hitting coach. Defending International League North Division champion, Scranton Wilkes-Barre opens the season at home on April 7th with that new look and those new faces in the dugout. The kid is in today. Ken Griffey Jr., he of the sweetest swing, the backwards cap, the wide smile, received a record amount of votes to enter the MLB Hall of Fame. Now, three writers didn't vote for Griffey because they don't really know baseball. Still, Junior set to be inducted into Cooperstown this July, along with former New York Met Mike Piazza. Now, one of the best catchers of all time received 83% of the vote in his fourth year on the ballot. Players need 75% to be inducted. Those two were the only two that got in. And a final note, former Penn Stater Devin Still, who entered the public spotlight even more throughout his daughter Leah's battle with cancer, was signed to the Houston Texans future slash reserve roster today after spending the season without a team. Stay tuned. Coming up, Gary Perna is in with a final look at the forecast. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicapped accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor and private parties. Call 570-384-2314. Tune in each week to WYLN TV 35 to watch the number one Hazleton-based broadcasted television talk show, The Storm, hosted by Tiffany Cloud. Candidates, politicians, community leaders, and more appear on The Storm when they want to be heard. New shows air Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and these additional air times, only on WYLN TV 35. We're your local network. I'm Bill Washko, I handle sales at WYLN, and I am at the American Cancer Society Telethon. I do telethons, helping hands, because I like to help the community, the local people, and the dollars that help local people, young and old. All right, well, taking a look, if you're heading out tomorrow, not looking too bad to be nice and sunny. 37 up in Wilkesbury, 32 in Williamsport. Not looking out too bad in your seven day forecast here. We're going to see a chance of rain over the weekend. But, you know, what can we expect for January? It's going to be nice and 
cool. 40s for tomorrow and Friday. 41 on Saturday, but Sunday, that's where you can see a chance of some rain. It's going to be hot enough out there with a 52. Not that it's hot, but 52, so you don't have to worry about any snow at this point. But those overnight temperatures keep going lower and lower. I know it is. It's freezing outside, especially in the morning and at night, so make sure to bundle up. I think 52 will feel hot, though. Oh, yeah, well, yes. it's usually how it gets <laughs> right around the end of February when it hits 52. Everybody's like, it's so hot out. I'm like, but it's middle of uh, mm -hmm. summer. If it hits 52, we're wearing yeah. our winter coats again. But we have an exciting. We had a first game yesterday. We have another yesterday. game coming up on Crestwood Friday. Crestwood at Hazleton. Yeah. Girls basketball. That's always exciting. The boys play on Saturday and tickets are selling out for that. But WYLAN 730 on Friday. Crestwood at Hazleton. Girls basketball. Tune in and we'll have Games all season long, Tuesday yeah, and Friday pretty much every Pretty week. exciting, so if you want to find out when those games are, make sure you check out our website and our Facebook page. Have a good night.